Hey, what's going on? It's Low for Low Nose back at you with another tech take, and this is the Godox GM6S. We're gonna take a look at the design, the build, the features, and also compare the GMS6S to the previous model, the GM55, and see how much of an upgrade this really is within this review. All right, so let's talk about the box features. Automatically, you'll see that this is an IPS ultra bright touchscreen. This has 1200 nits. So this is super bright. Even if you wanted to use this outdoors, you're covered. It does come with a, a light shade, but you've got 1200 nits of brightness. Just give you a comparison. The previ previous one was probably about 600. Um, and Atmos is probably about a thousand nits. So you've got 1200 nits in this one. 3D LUT monitoring support means that if you like to record in a log format, you can load up those LUTs onto your monitor and see it in Rec. 709. You've also got customized short keys where you can take any menu within the monitor and shortcut it to one of the selected five buttons on the top for quick access. And this is probably one of the cool highlight features of the monitor. You have camera control access as well. All you would need is just a separate cable cord that you would connect to the monitor and then to your camera. And then you can actually control your camera not all features are accessible, but you do have a good amount of control from your to control your camera from your monitor as well. And we'll finish off with real-time monitoring, meaning if you have a pair of headphones and you want to monitor your audio from the monitor, you can as well. Okay, so let's take a closer look at the Godox GM6S screen and automatically you can see this beautiful IPS touchscreen that we have right near. The colors are bright, they're sharp. Now the box does say 4K, but let me be clear, this is not a 4K output unit. While it will take in a 4K signal, the resolution of the screen is 1080p 60 Hertz. So just keep that in mind. And if you want, you can pass through a 4K signal, but the screen itself is 1080p. We'll flip it to the top. Oh, and, uh, and be also because it's, it's, uh, since it is IPS, you have great side viewing angles uh, when you go to the side, meaning that with some VA monitors, you really lose view of angle when you're 12 to the side, because, to the side because it is IPS, you've got great viewing angles and saturation, saturation, of, saturation of color from different viewing angles. Flipping into the top, you can see our short key buttons, F1, 2, 3, and 4, and 5. You got five short key buttons. You have a back button. You also have a tread mount there. You can connect it to a tripod or wherever you want to mount this camera. You've got a scroll and menu wheel right here. We'll flip it to the side. You've got your power button, another tread button, and of course, you can see that we're actually powering our monitor through USB. Through USB. So I've got a little adapter right here and you can just plug it in. And if you wanted to, you can take a regular LP battery. See right here, you can go ahead and slide it in, right? And this will actually let us, we still have continuous power with it and we can go back and forth. Now you switch it over, uh, we'll take a look at the back and you see we've got passive cooling here as well, meaning that this is a very silent monitor. You're not gonna have fans picking up and whirling maybe contaminating whatever audio recording. This is a very silent monitor. And then we'll go to the top, well, I'm sorry, to the left, and you have your HDMI out, you have your HDMI in, as you can see here, and then we have your headphones and your remote. And remember, like I said before, with a certain cable that I have, and I'll show, I'll show it to you later, you can actually control your camera with the monitor. Going to the bottom, you have your DC out, DC out, DC, DCI in, if you need to pass through power, another tread mount, and your port here for your SD card so you can load your LUTs. Really simple. If you have any .cube format files, you would just load it onto, onto the, uh, the root drive of your memory card. Just go and load it up as well. Now, before we get into the features, let me show you the accessories that actually come with your GM6S. Uh, first, you get, a, you get like a little skeleton here so you can actually plug, or not plug, uh, wrap around your, your, light, your light screen uh, if you're out in the sun. And I'll show you what else you get inside of the box here. Of course, you get your instruction manual. All right. You get three HDMI cables of different connections. So here we've got an HDMI micro, okay, that you get with it. Then we have, a, we have your regular standard HDMI to HDMI. And I want to be clear that these are 1.4 connections. The HDMI ports on the side, these are 1.4 connections. So basically you're just doing using it for HDMI video. And of course you have your HDMI to HDMI mini cord right here. 
Okay, you also have a a little hot shoe bendable mount here as well so you can connect it to your camera. Okay, and we can actually mount it on there. And you have your light screen as well. So you can go and you would just connect it using the Velcro and you're connected and good to go there. You also get an Allen wrench here, Allen wrench as well to tighten up the hot shoe um, foldable arm. I'm not really, I'm losing right now. <laughs> I'm forgetting right now what this is actually called. And you also have a, a wipe as well to wipe down your screen. Now real quick, I wanna do a quick comparison between the GMS GM6S to the GM55, the previous model. The biggest difference, where'd it go? Here we go. I'm gonna turn both of them on. And we'll do a side-by-side -side comparison of what it actually looks like. Uh, the build, the frame of the previous, of the GM55 is just, it's just a little bigger. This actual screen size is the same. Um, we flip it to the top. You can see the differences in the buttons. Again, you've got one more function, uh, customized button button here, and you just have five there. But of course, the layout is just a little different. We go to the side. Oops. Of course, you have your okay, power, except the, the 55 does not have the USB powered option. We go to the bottom. Uh, you have your camera control port on the bottom, DC out top, and of course, the SD card there as well. And of course, your DC out and in the back. You have a fan system here, but of course you have, um, again, passive cooling to the side. And here we go to this, flip it again. HDMI out and in, headphone and the remote. The remote, like we saw before, is actually within this port. But yeah, there you go. That's your side by side. What I wanna do for you now is give you a real quick picture by picture comparison so I'm gonna plug in this HDMI cord to the out of this and plug it to the video in of this so you can see the difference in the picture. Okay, so automatically, I'm not sure if you can see if the camera is truly representing it, but the GM6S is a lot brighter than the GM55. Again, this is 1200 nits and I believe this is 600 nits. And it's just a, a big difference in comparison as far as the brightness. When I'm looking at my monitor, it seems like they're almost close, but no, in, in actuality, the GM, the GM6S is way brighter. The colors are popping out way more. It's just a lot more visible to what it looks, uh, yeah, to compares to what it sees. Especially since I know my camera's catching it, but especially off angle, this one looks way clearer than, than this one right here. Uh, so it's definitely, a, this one is a lot more usable, especially if you're just, if you're not looking dead on, if you have to be off to the side, you'll definitely get a better accurate picture from the GM6S. All right, so let's go to the camera control test. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna connect this directly to my camera. Now I wanna point this out. You see how my battery gets, it's really big and bulky and how it can get in the way and how if I want to lay it flat, I can't because of the battery. This is where the USB power, this is where the USB power actually makes a lot of sense where I can just take out the battery. And now I have more mobility and flexibility because of Okay, because of lack of it, and now I can use it through USB. So I'm going to pick my USB cord, which is a USB mini. There we go. All right, so let's take a closer look at the menu system of the GM6S. So all you have to do is just tap it and bring up the menus. And of course, we'll go through like a full quick uh, render of what you actually have here. Now you have the basic, but also probably the most useful functions. Uh, that, that you need basically from a monitor. You've got your focus assist, and of course it lets you know what's in focus and you can choose the different colors of what your focus looks like. You also have zebras as well, and you can, to, you can choose your different IRE um, for your zebras. So me personally, I like to set my exposure at 40 IRE using middle gray, right? Which is what 48 is at. Here it starts at 50, so it's just a bit uh, higher, but if you, like, if you like doing your exposure or trying to see if you're clipping your highlights, you have different IREs that you can set your, your zebras to. You can also turn that off as well. And remember, everything here we can set, set to a shortcut key. You also have your waveform as well. You can turn on waveforms, and of course you have your option of a Y, UV, RGB, histogram, or vector. You can turn all your wave, whoops. There you go, there's your waveform. Uh, y, back out of it, I see how it changes differently. 
Um, we can turn it off. We can go to all waveform. We've got a complete list here of all your waves there, there, and also your see how much saturation that you have going on as well. We can back out of that, go to waveform, and turn that off. Of course, you can do LUTs as well. We can load a LUT. You can manage your LUTs. And like I said before, you would be using your SD card, loading your LUTs onto the root of the SD card, and of course, loading it from here as well. And you would just go there to load up the LUT. Right now, I have a, a BT7 known Canon 3 log, and I can turn it on. That's off, and I can turn it on. And of course, I can do a comparison where I have the LUT on, and of course, the LUT off on that side, so you can tell the difference between what it looks like. And of course, you can always, whoops, you can add these to your shortcut keys. You also have a video assist where you can set your, your aspect ratios if you want. You also have a center marker where you put a center marker there, safety marker as far as where do you want the framing if you know it's gonna be different later on. You have a marker mat if you want to choose that as well. Again, you're kind of setting up your framing framing for later on. You have a group, oh, turn it off. Grid line, of course, if you want to do the rule of thirds, you can always work with that. And of course, you can change your marker color. You also have your basics, such as an audio meter um, that you've been seeing running on the side right here. You can turn that on or off. You have false color. And false color is super useful. Especially, you know, again, going for exposure, it lets you know here is your IRE scale here, depending on the color. And you have two versions of that. You have mode one and mode two. Mode two is a little simpler. There's a lot less colors and it just kind of gives you more of a general area, such as, of course, if you, what are the highlights? What are the, what are the things that are just black? And what are the, usually areas of skin tones, it makes it simple, kind of basically three different parts they can go by. Of course, you have monochrome, pixel to pixel, zoom, and you also have display as well, where you can affect your color space, such as Rec 79 or Origin. Or Origin. Now, you're going to come across some kind of LUTs that may be like BT 2020, um, or maybe other kind of <laughs> LUTs that are not Rec 709. The monitor might not play nice with it because this is an 8-bit monitor. If that's the case, you're gonna select origin, so it will play nice with those LUTs. So just keep that in mind. Now you can play with the brightness, the contrast, the saturation, the sharpness. You know, it's, it's like you're affecting a regular monitor, like a TV or computer monitor. And of course, if you mess up, you can reset all of that. And of course you have your system, your user settings. We can actually create three different user profiles and you can set it up however you want, as far as the shortcuts or where things are set or some features are on and off, you have that option. Then you also have your language, if you want to put in a different language, your battery tip, letting you know as far as where your battery is, volume, if you want to adjust the volume, which is right here, and of course your backlight. And again, my backlight is at 100, which is 1200 nits. And of course you can play with your shortcuts as well, deciding what you want on each shortcut. Shortcut, we have camera control. We also have image flip, just, to, just depending on how you are in the camera's place, maybe you're doing a um, a top lay and you have to flip the image over, you can actually do that. You have factory, restore factory. Maybe you change something, maybe the, the colors or the brightness or something. Uh, you can always factory set if you forgot what it was. You can upgrade if there's a software upgrade and then also power down as well. All right, so let's finish off with the camera control system when we use our monitor to control our camera. Me, I'm using a Canon R6 and I have to get the specific cord for that camera or for that series of cameras so we can actually control our camera again through the monitor. Now, if you wanna get, if you wanna activate the control system, again, have the cord connected, just swipe from the right to the left and you'll see your camera control buttons come up. First, you have your shutter button, meaning that when your phone is on camera mode, I'll switch it over to camera mode, you just press it and it'll take a picture of it right there. Let's switch back to video, okay? And of course you have your record button where you just press that, and of course you're now recording, you start recording there. Again, you're not gonna record footage to the actual monitor, you're just telling the monitor, hey, tell camera to record. We'll stop from there. Now, now this button right here, this is more kind of like your your, your pre-focus button where if you're trying to get it to re-back re into focus, just if you were just a slightly press on this, you're doing the same thing here by pressing there. If it seems out of focus, you want to get focus back into focus again, you'll just press that. 
Now this is actually your, your focus styles. You can actually focus up or focus down from the these styles right here. Again, you have your ISO. You can actually move your ISO. Right now you can see that my ISO is at 800. I can go up on the ISO, making the image brighter. I can actually go down on my ISO, making it darker. Okay, you have your aperture button. Right now it's at 5.6. And of course I can go up. I can bring it, I can bring it down or actually make it, bring, make the aperture higher. Okay, go back. And of course you have here, this is your shutter button where you can affect your shutter as well. Which makes it super convenient to actually control your camera and just the many options that the Godox GM6 offers. The GM6S offers to you. All right, so let me give you my final thoughts on what I think about this. First of all, this is far leaks better than the previous one, the GM55. You really gotta appreciate the, the 1200 nits. Nowadays, brighter is better. Just keep in mind whenever something whenever something claims to be brighter, it's gonna take up a lot more battery. So make sure you have the battery, um, the, enough battery to actually support that. And again, if, if it's just too bright for you, you can always bring the brightness down so it can last a little longer. I like the fact that you can load up a lot of different LUTs on it. And especially if for some, some reason you have a LUT that doesn't just work with the monitor, you can go back to origin so you can get some, um, some correct colors with that. Uh, the passive cooling, how it's very silent. You don't have to worry about adding additional noise to it. That's super cool and simple. Of course, the, the false color that goes with it, the zebra, all the all the extra things that you need a lot that sometimes cameras just don't come with. You know, you've got so many things in this thing right here. And it's, yeah, for my opinion, it's definitely a worthy upgrade. And also you get so many different HDMI cords as well. No matter what camera you have, you know that out of the box are gonna be covered. But at the same time, remember, you're gonna have to make that extra purchase for the actual, um, the camera control card. As far as my, my cons, I gotta say, I felt like the camera hood, the, the light shade was kind of flimsy, kind of on the cheap side. It was like, eh, you know, it just, it was just kind of whatever. Um, I do wish that it did come with the actual camera control card, so you'd have to spend extra, uh, extra money on that, but that's, that's there. Um, and maybe if it came with a USB cord as well for charging, that would have been nice as well. But you know, it's, it's not a deal breaker at all. In the future, I'd love to see Godox actually come out with a monitor that actually records at the same time. All right, that's my review of the Godox GM6S. Really hope it helped you out because I like it. As always, I'll leave links in the description down below so you can pick up your own GMS, GM6S and you can see other reviews as well so you can really get a full understanding of what this uh, has to offer. Uh, leave a comment down below if you have more questions about the GM6S S uh, monitor and I'll be sure to get back at you and let you know for my understanding or for my test what it does and what it offers and how it holds up over time. Make sure you hit that like button if you like what's going on here and also ding that notification to be notified for future videos as well. Guys, thank you so much for stopping by. I will see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.